Hey besties and thank you so much for joining me in today's video. Welcome back if you're new. I just wanted to say to you guys before we do jump in, I have been so appreciative and just so happy to read all of your comments on my recent videos talking about fragrance. I was kind of nervous when I did start doing fragrance videos because I know like I still love makeup so much but I do have this new love and this new passion and the way that you guys have just super supported that and still watch my videos and still commented almost even more and just been so supportive it just means so much to me so before jumping into this video I don't want to get like emotional but I just wanted to thank you guys so much because your response to this new passion of mine is just insanely overwhelming in the best way so I love you guys and um, if you're interested in any of my makeup on my face I'll link that down below scent of the day is actually a good one. It's Parfums de Marley Casilli mixed with this is Jimmy Choo I Want Chew. Both of these are stunning summer fragrances which is actually the topic of today's video. So today's video we're going to talk about summer perfumes for 2023. I'm going to try to keep the video at 10 perfumes. I'm really going to try my hardest. Let's hope I'm able to. Maybe I'll do like a part two of some sort if you guys are interested. Let me know down below. But um, yeah, let's jump in and don't forget to let me know your scent of the day and your top three favorite summer perfumes. I would love to know. Starting out with Parfums de Marly, this is Casilli. I absolutely love Casilli. I think she is so powdery and floral and fruity and the fruit in here is actually coming from plum rather than um, peach which I know a lot of people think because of the packaging. By the way, just a moment for the packaging. Isn't it stunning? All of the Parfums de Marly's perfumes are beautiful and fun fact a little sidebar when I first actually saw this perfume I went into a Dillard's and I'd never smelled Delina that's what I went there for funny enough I was just getting into perfumes and I actually thought the brand name was Delina and all these perfumes were from the house of Delina it doesn't even matter the point is I knew nothing and I bought samples of every single one they're not really supposed to give you more than I think two or three but me and the guy were just talking and he was flirting a little but I was like okay whatever give me the fragrances you guys know but I um <laughs> I ended up getting every single sample I took them home I used them and the one that really really resonated with me the most was definitely Casilli unfortunately this one is the one that didn't last as long again that's just like kind of the downside with this perfume but it was the one that intrigued me the most it was the most me from the house that one and perfumes de marly delina exclusive both of those are so magical so anyway sorry you guys don't mean to chat on too much but i absolutely love this perfume i think it is 100 percent worth getting your nose on at least try it out in the actual dead of summer perfect perfume if you wear it any other time it is not going to project it's not going to last it's not going to do any of those things but in the summer I feel like it really does shine it is just a perfume that when you wear it when you smell it you just feel happy you feel uplifted it's definitely my happy scent for sure or at least one of them it has that mimosa in there so there's a bit of citrus which really does open the fragrance up. Again, there is some fruitiness in here. Let's go ahead and go over the notes. Let me know, by the way, in the comments down below if you guys do enjoy when I talk about every single note or if you could care less. I love hearing about notes, um, but I just want to hear your opinions. Okay, we have top notes of red currant, floral notes and Bulgarian rose, middle notes of frangipani, Plum, Petalia, and Mimosa. That Mimosa gives it that really nice, sparkly, happy quality. The base notes of Vanilla, Tonka Bean, and Sandalwood. So it kind of gives it a creaminess, a sweet vanillic vibe at the base, which just goes so well. It really just grounds the fragrance in the best way. Yes, I do agree. Um, this perfume is just amazing. Get your nose on it. See how it lasts on your skin though because I'm just saying for a perfume of this price, I got this on a sale and that's the way I'd recommend to get it is all I'm going to say because for me personally, I love, love, love the smell of this but the longevity for the price point for $350... 
it needs to last all freaking day, like non-negotiable. So I love her, but I love her on a sale, let's say. Also a very quick mention for Delina La Rose. If you do love the original, but you want something that's a little bit lighter, it's fresher, it's more aquatic, it has that watery rose nature, beautiful perfume, lovely pretty girl fragrance, amazing for spring or summer, so I wanted to mention it just very briefly. Fragrance number two is super affordable. This one is Zara's Hibiscus, and you guys, it smells so good. I do get a lot of compliments on this scent. The only thing to consider is with Zara fragrances in general, other than Red Temptation and Rose Gourmand that I've smelled so far, Zara fragrances do not seem to be the most long-lasting, so just keep that in mind. This is something you definitely have to reapply, but you guys, the fruits in here are juicy. You definitely get that mango, and it is delicious, mouth-watering goodness. You get some florals in here definitely getting some citrus. It's just a vibe, super juicy and fruity and fun for the summertime. Perfect. There's not much maturity in here, but it is just a really beautiful, fruity, fun fragrance that I definitely needed to mention in this video, and it's also super affordable, but again, I just feel like Smells so good, you guys. Smells amazing. And I know Zara just came out with the new Barbie perfume for the new Barbie movie. And by the way, have you guys seen that yet? Because I really want to. And I really want to get that perfume in my hands at some point. This perfume has notes of tangerine and bitter orange. So yeah, a lot of citrus. Middle notes of passion fruit, mango, and peony. And then base notes of vanilla, amber, and orchid. So it's a gorgeous perfume. Definitely worth getting your nose on, especially for that beautiful price point. Perfume number three is Lean Peratrice. And this is from Dolce & Gabbana. I absolutely love how fresh and how fruity this perfume is. The fruits in here are done so beautifully. We have kiwi, and most importantly, you're getting that watermelon. Think of the most ripe, juicy watermelon. When you take that initial first bite, and the juice is like spilling down your chin, and it's just such a juicy, it just really reminds me of that experience in the summertime, and that's what I love about it. I will say, when you do initially spray, you do get kind of that punch from the rhubarb, for sure. But it's such a refreshing fragrance. I really think you guys should go to Ulta, like, or at least the next time you're there, and get your nose on the perfume. You can get it as low as, I think, like $30, $40 on Joma Shop or other discounters. I think even Amazon has it on sale. Usually, I think the retail on this is $90, but again, you can get it on sales. It's lasted me a while. I've wore this a freaking lot, and... I just love it. I think if you're looking for a beautiful, fruity, fresh, almost like aquatic, watery fragrance, this is fantastic. By the way, top notes of kiwi, rhubarb, and pink pepper, middle notes of watermelon, silamen, jasmine, and then base notes of lemon tree, musk, and sandalwood. Perfume number four is Princess Eau Fraiche by Killian, and this perfume is the perfect perfume for when you're in the summer months, it's very hot, but you still want that sweetness. You have that sweet tooth, but you still want to smell fresh, you still want to smell citrusy and bright and all the things that come with summer. I really love this one. I'm going to be honest and say I still do love the overall composition of the original more, but I do think for summer this is just a more sheared out... <sighs> citrusy version. I love how creamy the marshmallow makes this perfume. It gives it this creamy, citrusy, vanillic vibe, which I really do enjoy here. It's beautiful. It almost reminds me of like a citrusy dessert. I really like it. I think a lot of people would love the scent. The only thing for me with this perfume I do struggle with is that projection. I can't get it to project. I do feel like this perfume, it does last quite a bit. In terms of longevity, pretty good. 
but for me personally, I just don't know why it won't project. I can barely smell it on me, but other people can sometimes smell it on me, so maybe I'm just anosmic to it. I don't know. Either way, it's a beautiful, beautiful scent. Again, I still love the composition of the original more. I think we're getting more of the ginger there. We're getting more of the green tea, though I do smell green tea here. Yep, we have top notes of bergamot, marshmallow, green tea, and ginger. Again, as a lot of you know, bergamot is definitely my happy note, my uplifting note. It's just very good vibes, so I'm loving this perfume a lot. I just wish I didn't have to spray so heavy to actually be able to smell it. So if you guys know any layering combinations that go really well with this perfume, please let me know in the comments down below. Let me tell you, this is such an easy reach. This is such a beautiful staple, could be a signature scent. I don't see anyone actually disliking this perfume. And this is from Versace. This is Dylan Purple. It is stunning. I really love this perfume. It is so girly to me. It is so clean and fresh. It has that shampoo-y vibe to it, but oh my goodness, it almost reminds me of God is a Woman from that beautiful sparkling feature that I believe is coming from the pear. It is very, very beautiful. Definitely great for out the shower. Mm, it actually puts a smile on my freaking face. This is a beautiful, stunning fragrance. It is lovely. There's nothing I could say bad about this perfume. The longevity is not the best with this perfume, but it's better than God is a Woman. And I did just get Juliet Has a Gun. I need to compare this one and that one because that one also has the very beautiful sparkling pair to it as well. But this to me just smells different. Again, I'm getting more of like a shampoo-y type vibe from this perfume and I am loving it. I feel like this perfume is perfect for every day. Such a good easy reach and I find myself reaching for it so often. Sometimes I actually have to keep it away. It's that good. So not saying there's nothing out there that smells like this. Obviously, I just named two other perfumes that I think have a similar, a similar vibe. But I do feel like this one specifically, if you do like that shampoo-y, fresh, fruity, floral vibe, I think you'd absolutely enjoy this. Let me go ahead and go over the notes. It has top notes of pear, bitter orange, and bergamot. Makes a lot of sense because all of those notes really give it an inviting, happy opening. Middle notes of freesia, pomerose, and mahonial. And then base notes of ambroxan. Funny because that's exactly what is in. Julia has a gun and I said they're a little bit similar. Iso E Super. I've never seen that note in fragrance. Sai, Silkoid. Virginia Cedar, and then Balambra Tree. So very interesting notes there, some I've never seen before, but overall just such a stunning everyday summer fragrance. And then if you really want to take it there for summer and just completely commit, you want coconut, you want florals, you really want that sun tanny vibe, I'm gonna say Tom Ford Soleil Blanc, but make it bougie, make it a little bit, mm, you know? This is definitely a beautiful perfume, never a bad choice. I don't think I'll ever be able to do a spring or summer perfume video without at least mentioning it because it really is such a beautiful, addictive scent to my nose anyways. It does have a bit of the sun, sunscreen scent to it, but it's not off-putting. This to me is definitely upscale. And just to paint you a picture of a scenario, I'll actually be wearing this perfume. I am planning on wearing it on my cruise coming up. I think it'd be perfect for that, perfect for a cruise or a resort or just if you're on a private yacht, whatever the case may be. And it's a little bit more than just like a beachy summer vibe. You know, I think that's perfect for this perfume. Top notes of pistachio, bergamot, cardamom, and pink pepper. Middle notes of tuberose, ylang ylang, and jasmine. And base notes of coconut, amber, tonka bean, and benzoin. So the base is definitely given creamy coconut and sexy vibes. Very, it's just more than a suntan lotion in my opinion. That's mine. The only negative I could say about this perfume, I'm not gonna lie, 
is that it's not very long lasting and for the price point again this is one where I say try to find a sale if you can I don't even have the big bottle because the big bottle is so expensive perfume number seven is another great summer perfume which is utopia vanilla cocoa this is an incredible summer vacation perfume I think it would be lovely I think this perfume has something so inviting and so cozy about it I believe it to be the coconut milk because that gives it kind of a lactonic creamy smooth vibe that I am just so interested in it's so pretty you guys I love this I would say this is for sure a pretty girl perfume for summer absolutely the white florals in here are definitely there don't get me wrong so if you don't like white florals I would definitely smell before you buy in general I always recommend that but I will say, especially with this one, there's honeysuckle in here, which I find to be so addictive. There is pear blossom, which has that sweet, airy quality to it. Really beautiful white florals in the opening. And then you also do get jasmine, which is intense in this perfume, especially when it does dry down. So that's the only thing for me that was a little tricky in the beginning. But with the mixture of the vanilla, with the mix of the beautiful, beautiful coconut milk, milk in here I think it really does work <sighs> it's so pretty and then at the base you do have that sandalwood let's actually go over the notes top notes of coconut milk honeysuckle pear blossom and Italian lemon middle notes of tuberose gardenia jasmine sandback and ambrette which I love so there's a bit of muskiness Base notes of bourbon, vanilla, sandalwood, musk, and patchouli. And the patchouli in here is not intense at all to my nose. So this is a really great option as well. Number eight is Giorgio Armani's Ocean de Gioia. I already spoke about this in my spring video, but it just feels like a disservice to not always mention this perfume because oh my gosh, you guys. It smells, to put it very briefly like the most beautiful ocean breeze with a bit of sweetness from that brown sugar with also this citrusy vibe as well there's a bit of citrus in here for sure but more than anything it's really given ocean vibes it's very aquatic just a crisp ocean breeze is what I get in here and it's magical. I want to smell like this every day but I am someone that definitely does like to switch it up but I'm just saying perfect everyday fragrance in the summertime year round it's perfect but in the summer it really does just come alive and there's nothing bad i could say about this perfume there's that note of salt in here that does add to the um it adds to that you know ocean breeze vibe there's also that pear that gives it that sparkling nature there's nothing bad i could say and then again the brown sugar with the sweetness there's some floral i believe but more than anything again Again, to put it really really plainly ocean vibe bit of sweetness perfect everyday fragrance perfect easy reach the notes in here are top notes of pear citruses and green notes middle notes of water jasmine salt lily of the valley and rose and base notes of musk and sandalwood I don't know if I get the um, the rose very much in here I do get lily of the valley for sure Maybe if I really sit here and try to think about rose, I could pick it up. I do smell some florals, but I don't know if it's necessarily rose. But yeah, get your nose on this perfume. Perfume number seven is KLE's Eden Juicy Apple 01. And this is the perfect staple in any woman or man's collection if you want to check it out. It's beautiful for the person that definitely knows how to have a good time, that doesn't want to take themselves too seriously. I mean, perfume does not always have to be super serious. It doesn't always have to be seductive or it doesn't always have to be um, flirty, complex, though this is a little flirty to me, just a little bit in my opinion. It doesn't always have to be heavy or complex complex or you don't have to think about it too seriously once again I think this perfume is just beautiful and the person that's wearing it once again they know how to let loose they know how to have a good time they know how to just live in the moment and I think that's everything that this perfume definitely does convey so 
I know I talk about it a lot, but it really is for a good reason. If you want to smell juicy, if you want to smell fruity, if you want to smell like berries and apples and just all the goodness, definitely check this perfume out. The notes are red apple, lychee, black currant, and pink grapefruit. Middle notes are wild berries, raspberry bloom, jasmine, and may rose. And the base notes are sugar, musk, vanilla flower, amber, and moss. It's a good one. I actually have seven other perfumes in front of me to talk about, but I want to keep it at 10, and I can't do this video without mentioning this perfume because for the value, for how strong it is, for the longevity, it's just, it's beautiful, you guys. This is Mugler's Angel Nova. This one is flirty. She's sexy. She's just having a good time as well. Similar to my um, Eden Juicy Apple in that way, but this is definitely giving more flirty vibes, more sexy. It has, I believe, some wood in the base that is giving it that oomph. It's definitely a little bit more mature, I will say, than that one, but definitely still so youthful and so beautiful at the same time. It's kind of like Delina's younger sister. I've said that before because it does have that rose, but it does actually have raspberry, which I really love in fragrances. It gives it that youthful, um, just very kind of playful vibe, flirty vibe, if you will. It's fantastic, you guys. I cannot get enough of the perfume. The way the rose is done in here, too, is not super mature. It's just... Really, really pleasing to the nose. This is definitely a people pleaser. When I wear this perfume, I do get compliments and it is so long lasting. When I put this on my shirt, I can smell it on my shirt like in the laundry like a week later after I've wore it, I swear. When you guys test this on your clothes, you will see what I'm talking about. It is absolutely phenomenal. It smells so pretty. I, I really love it. I feel like I got super passionate about this perfume, but that is just because I really do love it. And again, I just think for the value and how it performs, it's insanely good. The top notes are raspberry and lychee. The middle notes are damask rose. The base notes are Iki Aki Gala Wood, and then the Benzoin. So this is a perfect scent. I would seriously recommend it. At least try to get your nose on it once again. It definitely is something to smell, and it is a head turner. Again, let me just tell you. So yeah, besties, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all the good things, and leave me down below your favorite current summer fragrances. I love you, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!